as I've been introduced, my name's Caleb, I'm 23, I've just graduated from university, and I guess when asked to share my story with, with porn um, and, and masturbation, I was quite apprehensive because uh, making myself feel vulnerable like this to so many people and for it to go online could ultimately mean I am sacrificing my respect, uh, my reputation, and potentially even opportunity to be employed. Um, so I was quite nervous about it, and who wants to be known as the porn guy as well? You don't really want that, do you? And so I, I really had to come before God, and, and God just showed me a picture, and it was this idea that if people are going to break free, it's going to have to take being vulnerable and open and honest. And the image that I got was me there with almost my guts out. And it's kind of a disturbing picture, but in the image, Jesus was there holding my guts and saying, I got it, it's all right. And then I also got the image that um, for your heart to come out, your guts have to come out first. So although that's a disgusting image, <laughs> it's given me a real sense of peace as I get up here. So, um, brill. So the thing that God really showed me was, it's about the bigger picture. This, this isn't about me. This is about society. This is about our nation. This is about the men in the church. This is about the women in the church. You don't have to look too far into the statistics to see that our nation is hooked. If you look at the statistics, you see that men and women are hooked on this stuff. Yes, this isn't just men. Men and women are hooked on this stuff. And so as the church, we need to engage with these issues and think about these issues and be vulnerable with each other and come out and be open. And so I guess by saying that, I share my story and my struggle. So when I was 10 years old, I was playing football in the park with some friends and we kicked the ball into the bush. And as we went to get the ball, um, there was a magazine there and the magazine was there with a, with a VHS videotape. And we looked at it, we were curious, and what we saw on this tape was both disgusting, but so enthralling and exciting, and, and, and gave us such a buzz as we looked at it. And f f f from seeing that it, at that point, it started something in me. It started this curiosity, this hunger, to want to see more of this stuff, to see more of, of what I saw there. And so Saturday nights, as I was growing up, watching Match of the Day, People, my, my family would, would go to sleep and I'd be left there watching TV and, and slowly it would, it would go from match of the day to, to late night Channel 5 shows where I would be guaranteed to see something. And then as I got older and older um, and, and things started getting harder and harder, um, it went from dial-up internet connection to broadband internet connection, which meant easier access, faster access. And I come from a, a household where my mother is a single mother which means, as a man, I rule the roost, which means I control the technology. If something on the computer is not, gonna, not meant to be found, it won't be found. If something is to be hidden, it will stay hidden. And saying this at the minute is very difficult because I've never actually shared anything with my sisters or my mother. So them seeing this is quite, quite daunting for me. And so that image that I gave you gives me a real sense of peace once again that God is holding my guts as I stand here and share some real vulnerable stuff. So things began to get deeper and deeper, and I found myself in such a hole. I found myself feeling so inadequate, and it was at a time as well, at 16, 17, leading the Christian Union on, s on, on, on Wednesday lunchtimes, going to church on Sundays, coming across as this passionate guy, yet at home I have all these files hidden on my computer of, of filth after filth after filth. And I'm there in this hole thinking, how am I going to come out? And I remember at 16... God gave me a, a, an experience which, which really did uh, show me something significant. And when I was 16, I'd come home from school, I'd be hungry, I'd, I'd be raiding the fridge, I'd, I'd come in and I'd just eat as much as I can at 16. If you saw photos of me at 16, you would have understood. I was quite a, was quite a chubby, chubby kid, I'm still getting over that. But at 16, one day, I, I come running into the house, I, I, I look through the fridges, I look through, the, through everything as I usually do, and on the table I find a box, and in that box is some cake. And to my joy, I open up the box and I eat the first big slice of cake. It tastes so good. I grab the second box, the, the second slice of cake, and I, and I eat it down. I wolf it down. And as I go to take the third, I look at the cake and I nearly throw up. There is green hair and mold all over this cake. This cake was out of date. And it really, I really felt God say to me, look, 
when you rush into things and just look to satisfy your desires, you don't actually see what you're eating may be unhealthy. And it made me at that point think, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. And that was a picture that would continually remind me of not just going to satisfy our desires. Well, at 17, I went to America. I found myself in a camp with my cousin. And for the first time, I heard people address this issue of porn and masturbation and, and lusting. And as they spoke at that camp about how these, these, these leaders and brothers had, had struggled with it, I remember sitting there next to my cousin and I was dripping with sweat, hoping that he would not see me, me nervously look and, and hope that he didn't see that I struggled with this stuff. But just being there and listening to them share gave me such freedom and such liberation and, and, a, and a sense of I could be free. So I came home from this camp. At this time, I began really taking my faith seriously. I really began seeing God in my life. So I deleted all the files, and simultaneously almost, friends were finding themselves in a similar place of wanting to take their faith seriously. And so a, a good friend of mine, no one had ever told us, like, masturbation is wrong, wanking is wrong, looking at porn is wrong. But I come from a family where when we watch something on the TV screen or a movie and two people begin kissing, we instantly look away and show that we're disgusted at what we see on the screen. So deep down, I knew this stuff was wrong. But no one ever told me how to, to deal with it. No one ever told me how to get around it. No one ever told me what to do if I felt so trapped by it. And so me and a group of friends set ourselves a challenge. We said, we, it's 2010, we'll see how long we can go without having a wank. We'll see who could go the furthest and the, the person who goes the longest will get a prize. And one thing you need to know is when dealing with such serious and, and deep topics, you need a sense of humor or else you're stuck. So we set ourselves a challenge. He was, a, he was studying to be a doctor at the time. He was called Dr. Wankenstein, and we all had <laughs> different names. If that's not allowed to be said, you can edit that out. Um, but it was just a good, good laugh. But out of that competition and brotherhood, we, we really began to understand that this was not about competition, but this was about brotherhood. So we created this group. It began to grow. We called it Last Man Standing. And as it grew and grew and grew, it went from 20 people to 200 people in the first year. And as we begin to understand what it means to be men of God and, and stand up for our faith, it went from 200 to 600 in the second year. And it's grown to 1,600 now where guys are just sharing what they, what they struggle with. And, and God has taught us so much. God has taught us so much from, from the idea that we don't want to masturbate because we have a higher standard of what God has called us to with our sexuality. We, we understand that this isn't all about sex and porn, but this is about the wider picture of being a man of God. And so my hope today is me being vulnerable here and sharing something about my struggle with porn and lust will give you a sense of finding freedom comes from a place of being vulnerable. Finding freedom comes from a place of being open and honest with, with people you trust. Whether it be porn or masturbation or whether it be food, whether it be pride, whether it be um, greed, it comes from a place of being open and honest and accountable. Um, so we've learned so much uh, along the way. God is teaching us so much. And I guess I just open up the invitation for anyone who does struggle with this stuff, with, with porn and masturbation or anything else, to, to do get in touch, I guess. Um, and I'd love to, to direct you in the right direction um, and whatever else. Yeah. Thank you.